this lesson, we are going to talk about timesheets and time offer requests and how we can configure this. So to use timesheets and time offer requests, we will have to uh, set up a few things in the admin center. So let's go to the admin center by going to the hamburger menu in the top left corner and clicking on admin right here. When you're in admin, we want to go to the finance, accounting and invoicing section. So we're going to click on this plus to expand it. And we're going to go to billing codes right here. In billing codes, we will go to the third tab, internal time, right here at the top. And in this tab, we can set different billing codes for the different time of requests, um, which are unrela unrelated to, to our task or ticket. So through these billing codes, we can monitor how an employee spends their time when it's unrelated to our ticket or task. And we can do this by two different ways. The first way is an employee can just um, set their time in their timesheet by regular time and there's no approval needed. Uh, and the second, second way is they can select or uh, request a time off. Uh, they can put in a time off request. And for this request, we can also set different categories. So what we will have to do is we, we will have to make different categories for both methods. As you can see, there are a few system categories right here indicated in this column, and they, they are added by default. You can edit them, but you can't delete them. And also we can set if something should be for regular time, so no approval needed, or if something should be a time of request for which will be uh, approval needed. So as you can see, we've added a few things of our own, like internal meeting, research and training. And um, you can do this by clicking on the new button right here, give it a name and select if it should be a time of request or if it should be a regular time uh, re request for which no approval is needed. After you've done this, you can click on save and it'll be added to the list right here. So when you have your list complete, we can go back to the admin menu and we can uh, go further within uh, the resources user to HR tab right here. So we, we are going to expand it. So each user um, uh, will get a, his, his or her own weekly billable hours call. We can set those calls two different ways. The first way is we can go to the resources user right here click on it and go to the user we want to uh, set this for. So we're going to go to this hamburger menu and click on edit for our own user account. And after the new screen is opened or the new tab is opened, we can go to the third tab HR right here and click on it. And we have um, the daily availability right here in the middle. So as you can see, this user, this resource, the daily av availability for it is um, eight hours for Monday through Friday. If someone works part time, you can just set it, for example, on the Friday for um, four hours or the amount of hours that they're working part time. And these hours are important on their timesheets because it will be displayed as their goals for the day. So if they haven't hit their goals yet, It'll, the hours will be displayed in red and if they have hit their goal, they will become black because they, they've just um, uh, uh, hit their goals. So you can just set this right for each employee. So for this, we'll, we will just leave it on eight hours. And also you can set a weekly billable hours goal right here. So for our employees, it's 30 hours a week if they work full time but you can change it to what, whatever suits your company. After you've done this, you can just click on save and close and you will go back to the previous screen. In this screen, we will go back to the admin center and I will uh, uh, show you how to also set the weekly billable hours goals for all employees really easy, which is after you've gone back to this admin screen, you can click on weekly billable hours goals right here. And as you can see, we have the same employee right here. And the available hours are based on the hours we've just set in the HR tab for this employee, which will be 40 because it were eight hours for Monday through Friday. 
And as you can see, we just can really easily edit the weekly billable hours goal from right here. So we will leave it at 30 because it was set up correctly. But if, uh, if it's set up incorrectly for some of your employees, you can, you can just edit it right here really quickly. So after you've done that, we can just go back. Uh, you can click on save. And after you've done that, we can go back to the admin me menu by clicking this button right here. And after you, after we've, we're in the admin center, we will go and configure the time off policies for the company. So as you can see, there's a button right here, time off policies, and we will click on it right now. And we will make our own um, time off policy. So I'm going to delete this one right here and we will make a new policy together. Okay, so we, are, we will click on the new policy button right there. And after a new policy uh, screen is opened, we will first give it a name. So we will type the name right here. We will make it active and we will make it de also default for new resources because our time off policy is the same for everyone within the company. After you fill this in, we can go back. We can go to the second step, vacation, and as you can see, you can change vacation uh, based on allotment or accrual. Allotment means the vacation hours are available from January first, and accrual means the uh, vacation hours are accrued throughout the year. So as you can see, you can make different tires for. Uh, from which vacation hours are, uh, for which employees are eligible for vacation hours. But for us, they're just eligible from the, the moment they start. So we are going to edit this one uh, by going to the hamburger menu and clicking on edit. And as you can see, a new screen is opened um, for which you can edit the annual hours. Our employees get 200 hours a year, so we will just uh, uh, add 200 right here and we think it's important for our employees to take um, uh, the, the vacation time so we're going to say they can't roll over more than 50 hours uh, each year and um, after we fill this in we can just click on save and close right here or if you want to edit a new one because they uh, should be eligible only after half a year or after a year or something like that. You can just click on save and new right here and configure it further um, to your liking. So, but we are going to click on save and close. As you can see, the annual hours are 200 or 25 days in a, in a calendar year and they can roll over 50 hours. After we've done this, we can go to the third tab, which is personal time. And we can edit it just the same as we did for vacation. So we're going to base this on allotment and we're going to say, okay, for personal time, they get 16 hours each year. So, and they can't, can't roll over because they should just um, uh, have a max each year. So we can, we're going to save and close this right here. And as you can see, they have two personal days each year. And after we've done this, we can go uh, to the third tab, which is sick time. And we, with us, each employee gets uh, three days or of sick time each year. So we're going to fill in three right here and click on save and close as we did before. After we fill this in and you're sure everything is okay, what we can do is we can go back to the general tab right here. And in the general tab, we are going to associate existing resources by clicking this button right here. You, you should know that if you're going to associate resources, we can't edit this policy any further. So you should be sure everything is okay. And after you, you everything is okay, we can just click on yes right here. And we can associate resources uh, by either typing their name or by clicking this button on this icon right, right here and just selecting the different resources. As you can see, we only have one resource. So for us, it's really easy. We just select this one box and we click on save and close. 
but for you, you might want to associate more resources. And we are going to choose an effective date. So um, you can choose, for example, the first of the month, but you can also, for example, choose the first of, of the year. So we, we are going to go with the first of January of this year and click on save. And right now we've just made our, our time off policy. So we're going to click on save and close. And the time off policy is done. Okay, so right now we've configured everything we want to configure. So we can go back to the home page by clicking on this button right here. And I, I will show you how it how it will work for the employee. So let's say I'm an employee and I want to uh, add my time other than on a ticket or a task. I will just hover over this icon right here and go to current timesheet right here. When I click on current timesheet, I will get to view my own timesheet. As you can see, I have no time on my timesheet right now, but I might want to uh, add some regular time. So what I can do is I can go to this new button right here and I can choose between start stop time or regular time. And regular time is the time we've just uh, set up within the billing codes within the admin center. So as you can see here underneath category, we have set up a few uh, regular time items, for example, internal meeting. When I've selected internal meeting, I can select the day for which I want to set the uh, time. So let's say um, for Monday, I've, I've, had a me I've had an internal meeting and it lasted two hours. I'll just fill in a two right here and I can uh, give some notes right here. So I can say it was the productivity meeting. And when I've, when I've added the time I want it, I can just click on save and close right here. And as you can see, um, the time is added on my timesheet internal meeting right here. And if I want to edit it, I can just click on this, this button right here and I can go back to the day uh, the time is set and I can edit my notes or I can edit the time or I can either uh, even add some more time. So let's say for today, the 20th, I also had an internal meeting and this meeting was with with um, uh, my client team. I can just add another note. I can click on save and close. And as you can see, it's added on my timesheet right here. So because I uh, my goals are to hit eight hours a week from Monday to Friday, as you can see, all my hours or my total hours are red right now. But if I go back to the previous period, like uh, with, the, with this button right here, I can see my hours for the previous week. As you can see in this week, whenever I hit eight hours on a day, it'll, it'll change to black right here because I've hit my goal. And as you can see right here, when I hit, hit my weekly goal, It'll, it'll also become green and the status um, will become green also right here. So um, that's how it works. And what I can do is if one of my timesheets is complete for the whole week, I can just click on this submit button right here and it'll be submitted for my, uh, uh, for my manager to, to be approved. So I can click submit right here. It'll, it'll ask the question, have you reviewed all your work? So I can click OK if I've, I've reviewed everything or I can click cancel if, um, for example, I should, I've, I've forgotten to add something and I can add, add something uh, uh, right now. Um, after you've clicked submitted, the, the timesheet will change. So as you can see, this one is submitted. And um, uh, as you can see, the edit button right here is gone. So I can't edit it anymore. And it's just become final. Um, wh when this happens, when you, what you can do when you've forgotten something is you can either ask your manager to recall a timesheet and click on unsubmit. Or if you have, if you have the right uh, uh, amount of rights for your user, you can click on recall or unsubmit right here yourself. So how this works for your for the manager is the manager the, he can go to um, 
uh, from the homepage, you can go to the hamburger menu in the top left corner right here. And they can go to timesheets right here and click on timesheets right here under uh, the waiting for my approval sign. So when I click on this right here, as you can see, a new page will load and here are all timesheets waiting for my approval. So I can see that there's one timesheet awaiting my approval. It's the timesheet for uh, this start date to this end date. And it was submitted on the 20th of this month. So I can see the worked hours right here and the amount of billable hours. So right now when the worked hours are 40 and the billable hours are zero, I might think to myself as manager, like, hey, what happened here? And I might want to get a little bit more detail about this timesheet. So what I can do is I can go to the hamburger menu right here and I can click on view timesheet right here. So when I click on it, a new screen will uh, open automatically and it will open in the list view right here. So in this list view, I can see what amount of time was booked each day and what, the, uh, what kind of time it was. So this time it was research. So um, I might want to get a little bit more detail and see what the uh, uh, employee uh, gave as notes. So what I want to do is I want to click on report view right here. And when I can click on it, as you can see, a new screen will become available. And in this screen, you have internal notes and summary notes available. So as you can see, I've just, this was for test. So I've just added notes test each, each day. But um, if an employee gives, gives his or her notes, you can just view them right here. And you can view if everything is working correctly or answered correctly. So after I've viewed the timesheet and I um, uh, uh, got, got the complete uh, picture, I can just click on the uh, or close the tab right here. And I can either uh, go to the hamburger menu to approve the timesheet or I can re reject the timesheet. If you have multiple timesheets and you want to approve them uh, all at once, you can just click on the checkbox right here and you can go to this button right here and approve or reject them all at the same time. So that's how uh, timesheets work. So let's say the uh, employee also wants to um, uh, 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 give their uh, or um, send in their time off requests what what you can do is you can go to this icon right here and go to time off requests right here so the employee can go to time off requests and what they can do is they can click on the new button right here and they can submit a new time off request by type right here as you can see the, the, these are the different types we set up in the billing codes so for example if an employee it, uh, is sick or has holiday or vacation, they can uh, ask, ask permission or um, uh, submit their time off request through this screen. So let's say I have personal time, I can enter a start date. So I can click this button right here to get the calendar view or I can just uh, type in the dates right here. So let's say I have an uh, uh, a personal time time off request because I have to go to the dentist next Friday. I can just select next Friday right here. And I can also for the end date select next Friday right here. And because it's the dentist, I don't have to um, uh, uh, ask for the whole day. I can just uh, give, uh, I can just submit like two hours or maybe three hours, whatever the time. So for me, it's two hours and um, I can just fill it in right here. If you want to do multiple days, you can, um, instead of the start date and end date being on the same day, you can just um, uh, change the end date to whichever date uh, uh, it should be. So I can, for example, uh, choose the Wednesday after, and instead of eight hours a day, which will be, or two hours a day, which will be eight hours total, because instead of personal time, I want to make a vacation request, it'll be eight hours a day. And as you can see, it'll, um, 
it'll it'll add it automatically so it'll be 32 hours in total as you can see the exclude saturdays and sundays sign will be um, uh, uh, set on by default if if there's a saturday or a sunday within the uh, 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 range i've selected and also if um, uh, there is a holiday uh, uh, within the range selected um, the, this sign will um, uh, go on by default so they don't have to uh, think about what uh, what they, sh they shouldn't or should um, uh, include or exclude the system will do that automatically for each employee and I can even give in a start or an end time if I for example want to um, uh, instead of eight hours a day I want to want to uh, only have the afternoon off and I can give a reason right here so I I will go on a holiday so um, uh, So I can give a reason right here. So I, I will say I, I will go on a vacation with my family. And after everything is filled in correctly, I can just click save. Or if I want a new one, I can just click save and copy or save and new. So for right now, I will, I will hit save. And my manager will get to see this time, this time of request. As you can see, it will be added right here in the, uh, uh, in my list of time off requests for this year so here I have a button so I can see back t uh, a few years or I can go uh, to next year so what my manager wants to do is how he wants to go to the hamburger menu in the top left corner go to timesheets and go to time off requests under waiting my approval when I click on time off request under waiting my approval I can approve each time of request um, by just clicking the, the sign right here to select them all or select them in individu individually and click on approve selected or reject selected. After I've done that, um, the employee will get, get an email uh, saying either the time of request has been approved or it has been rejected.